Okay, good evening. Welcome to the West Seneca School District budget hearing. Uh, that'll be the first part of the meeting, then we'll do a regular meeting. Um, after that, it'll be a fairly short meeting. So, um, hope everybody's staying healthy and every um, is everybody safe. And so, um, Larry, would you lead us in the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, so we'll start the, the budget hearing presentation, and our superintendent, Matt Bystrat, will give this. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, joining us this evening. It's great to actually see people in person for a change. Google Meet was great, uh, but this is this is better. I think it allows for a little bit more free flow of exchange. So um, I just want to point out to those that might be watching uh, on TV, I guess I'll say, that everyone came in with their masks tonight. So I've got my hand sanitizer right here. Uh, we took the masks off, uh, but we are <laughs> at least six feet apart, all of us, uh, in the event that we get up and move around the room, we definitely are putting our masks back on. Uh, but just for the sake of the audio, we're taking them off so you can hear. We're using the Governor Cuomo approach in terms of uh, having our meeting here. So um, I guess I would just like to start off by saying, first of all, that this meeting you know, typically would happen, you know, would have happened several weeks ago, uh, which is just one of the many consequences of the coronavirus pandemic. So. Um, you know, just, you know, I guess I, I would also say too, just to, I'd ask everyone to keep uh, those that have been, you know, more deeply affected by the coronavirus pandemic than others, potentially through the loss of a loved one in their prayers. Um, this year, I mean, you've heard this a lot, this is unprecedented, all right, just the, the, everything that's happened up to this point. Um, and I just want to credit our school community, the entire school community, you know, our, our staff, the Board of Education sitting in this room right now, our families, our students, everyone for coming together uh, and working so hard to, to make this work for our students. I really do think that, you know, with every challenge that came, opportunities right along with it, and I think we've taken advantage of those. And I really do truly believe that we've grown as a school community, um, you know, in some ways that maybe would have been un, uh, maybe unanticipated. So, so. As I said, this year uh, has been a year like no other. I'm going to tell you that next year is going to be the same. Th I shouldn't say the same. It's going to be another year like no other. Um, you know, our primary responsibility for beginning the school year really is just to make sure that we can do so safely uh, and to make sure that we have, you know, the appropriate resources in the right places to be able to support our students and our program um, and all of our school community moving forward. So. The budget planning process, you know, obviously, uh, and you'll be happy to know, began well in advance of the COVID uh, crisis that we're in right now, uh, months before. Really, it's an ongoing process, but it began months before. Um, so, and when you're doing the budget planning process, you do always identify your specific priorities, things like smaller class sizes, uh, programming, uh, vocation, more pro, uh, vocational programming for students at the high school level, uh, you know, mental health supports within school, things like that you're, you're planning for. But then at the same time as a school district, you have an obligation and a responsibility to be able to plan uh, to, you know, to be able to address emerging needs. Um, you have to be able to, you know, have capacity to be able to respond to things as they happen and change. Uh, and, you know, you have to make sure that the people within your organization are also able to adapt to that change as well. So I can tell you that no one knows what's in store one, with 100% certainty for the fall uh, come September. Um, there's actually, we're still awaiting some guidance from the state and they've indicated that they'll probably be coming in June, just some parameters that they'd like to see to put in place. So, I mean, that's gonna really largely dictate, um, you know, kind of how the school year starts. And even then too, I mean, I, I, that will be subject to change over the months and weeks that follow from that as well. So the one thing I do feel confident in saying though, um, is that I feel as though we've put together a good budget. Uh, the board approved the budget back in March, obviously. Um, you know, kind of in the middle of all this, and the budget uh, that we put together, though, was put together in a manner that was, uh, again, as I said, be able, it's able to be responsive, all right? Uh, it's a budget that reflects our ability to expand our capacity to be able to respond to things as they come, and there's quite a bit to respond to. Um, so I guess what I'd like to do is just to start off uh, at our first page here, get right into the meat of it here. So the first uh, proposition, that's our school district budget, and this is the one that uh, you know people have their eyes on maybe right now. Uh, our school district budget for this year is $129,564,636. That's what we're proposing uh, for the coming school year. Uh, and again, as I said, this is, you know, from my perspective, this is a budget that is gonna enable us to be able to be responsive to the needs of our students. Um, moving on, the increase uh, over the current year 
Did we jump there? There we go. It's a 3.13% increase over the budget from the current year. Um, and just you know, at the end of the day, you have to look, costs increase every year. You know, the cost of health insurance, the cost of contracts, insurance, copy paper, pens, pencils, widgets, whatever it is, costs go up, so we need to be able to respond to that. Moving into the budget overview. So this is actually, uh, the, the uh, state requires us uh, to utilize a format such as this. So it's broken out into three different categories. Looks like a lot of numbers and everything for anybody watching at home. And this budget presentation will be available online. We'll put it online for everyone as we do every year. Uh, but basically it's broken out into three major categories. There's your general support. So that's like your non-instructional uh, services, your principles, your professional development, materials, uh, anything you need to be able to support the instructional program. Uh, and then there's your program, uh, which is the largest area and also the area where you tend to see the largest increases because it has the most amount of people in it. All right, this is going to encompass your teachers, your, uh, your social workers, your clerical staff, nurses, your special education programming, the transportation department. Um, and again, that's all the totals are broken out down at the bottom. Uh, and then there's your capital. Uh, that's your maintenance of our facilities. So we're keeping the lights on. The building's clean and safe uh, for everyone within the school community. So it's broken out there, and you have uh, different years to compare it by, from the 1819 year to the 1920 year, and then our uh, proposed budget for the, uh, the upcoming year. So it's broken out into those categories, and all three of those categories will total our, our total budget. So to move on, uh, the impact of a contingent budget. Essentially, if our budget does not pass, uh, we go to what's called a contingency budget. And uh, effectively, we would eliminate $526,000, 526610 uh, $526, from the budget. And that's gonna come in the form of equipment, uh, and not equipment that would be related to health and safety or special education. Um, there would also be some tax implications as well, and we would have to find a way to be able to uh, meet our needs in the future or the budget not to pass. So this is our uh, property tax report card. Uh, also information we, we are definitely want to be able to report. Uh, really, there's, it's broken into three parts as well. The first part uh, involves our bu the, the proposed budget, and it also has the current year's budget as well, uh, and it, it related to the current tax levy and the tax levy that we're proposing for the coming year. Uh, the second part talks, it really looks at the allocations of our fund balance and how we're managing our fund balance. Um, something that I think is, uh, is interesting and very encouraging news uh, is by maintaining a, a solid fund balance and the way that we've been managing it, uh, we've actually been able to sustain our bond rating, actually, uh, by Moody's. Uh, we are A, triple uh, A rating. Is that how it's, uh, uh, Mr. Schultz? Yeah, A, triple A rating. So we've been able to sustain that, and so much of that really is because we are a district with relatively low debt, uh, and we've managed our fund balance uh, in a good manner that really helps us to be able to plan accordingly for the future. And having a good credit rating really enables us to borrow money at a good rate. Uh, so you know, you're borrowing money cheaper with less interest. So that's a really good thing. We want to be able to maintain that and for years to come. Um, the final section really focuses on our reserves. So you look at the, the very first one's capital, and it talks about our bus purchase. I'll reference that later on because that's, uh, that's, that's our proposition number two is our bus purchases. Um, every year we need to be able to take a look at uh, our capacity to be able to transport our students safely. So, uh, and I'll get a little bit more into the weeds on that, but I can tell you that we're very proud of our transportation department. We have uh, really about three-quarters of our, our buses and our drivers are our own. We do contract with a, with a, with a good agent, with a good uh, company as well, uh, but we're very proud of the services we provide with our transportation department. It also lists some of our other, um, uh, per, our other reserves as well, like our workman's comp and unemployment, things like that. So. So moving on, uh, the next one is our property tax levy cap. So uh, most people look at the very bottom first uh, on this. It says, do you plan to override the tax cap in the 2020-2021 uh, school year? And the answer is no. So the tax cap's been around for uh, almost 10 years now. It's approaching 10 years since its inception, and we have never sought to override the tax cap. So the good news there is if the le state legislature uh, extends the real uh, property tax credit, our, our taxpayer is going to get a chance to take advantage of that because we have not sought to override the tax cap. Um, so just, again, just kind of outlines, you know, the tax levy uh, that, you know, we, for the current year as well as the one we're proposing for the next year. Looks at some of our exclusions uh, related to, like, capital and things like that. So these are projected tax rate increases. 
Um, and you can see the four different towns uh, that encompass there. And really, there's a nice asterisk at the bottom there. Basically, it, it's it's all going to be similar for housing mar or uh, houses of a similar value. So the impact really should be comparable uh, across these towns and these municipalities. So the tax impact on an average home. Um, so you know, you say average home, hundred thousand uh, dollars. It's an easy number to kind of work with, and you can always extrapolate out if you needed to. But that's a nice, easy uh, number to work with. So we're estimating that actually that uh, our uh, folks that are our senior citizens, their star property taxes, they're actually going to decrease. That's what the parentheses mean there. If you're an accountant, but it's actually going to decrease by three dollars on a hundred thousand dollar home, uh, and it would be a thirty-five dollar increase uh, per thousand dollars on a hundred per on a hundred thousand dollar home, I should say. So, and I also will say too, the tax rates are officially set in August. So don't try to read that. Um, I have glasses on and that, that's not happening for me either. Um, but so what that is right there, that's our government exemption report basically. This just, this isn't something that we generate. This is something that's, that's given to us. This is just the number of exemptions within our school district. You can see the, the total dollar amount there. Uh, and really it's right there, just something I guess to note, it's 26.78%. You know, uh, is the value, the percentage, you know, exempted there. So just something for your information. Again, I know the print is, is rather small there, but that's our New York State report card. This is something that we're required to put up there as well. Um, if you look at the numbers of the, the, the years that we're looking at, it's actually information from the 2017-2018 school year. Again, this is, this is given to us, so we're, just, you know, we're, we're, we're putting in the information that, that's given to us there. Um, the one thing I would want to draw everyone's attention to is it kind of breaks out funding and what we spend. So you've got your this school district, similar school districts around the state, uh, and then you have all school districts within, within New York State. Uh, they do that just so basically you can say, okay, a district may be approximately our size. Um, you know, what are we spending per pupil? You know, what are other districts about our size spending? And then what does every district spend? If you look at the bottom right there, one area I'd like to draw everyone's attention to is in this school district, our per pupil spending average is about 17, a little over 17,000, going up to $17,707. A similar district group uh, is about $23,500. And then school districts across the state uh, on average, is over twenty-five thousand, approaching twenty-six thousand dollars. The reason I point that out is, per pupil, we spend far less than similar school districts and school districts across the state. So I just think that's important to note that we try to be efficient with our spending. These, this print seems to be getting even smaller, um, but ultimately this gives us, this is more a uh, continuation of our New York State report card. And this actually specifically relates to students that have special needs, our special education programming. So what that, the top part actually does, and if you really take some time to sit and digest it, it looks at the percentage of time that students are uh, taken out of the regular classroom setting and like the percentages. So then at the bottom there, there's a, a, a little chart there that talks about our school district's uh, classification rate, so basically, what percentage of our students are classified as students uh, with a disability? Uh, we're at 14.1%. Similar districts across the state, uh, we're, we're a little above that. It's about 13.4%, but statewide, the classification rate is about 147 a little editorializing, I will say. Um, so we're a little above similar districts and a little below the, the rest of the state. I will say that number has increased uh, in recent years. And I think that, that may be largely a function that people are comfortable in you know, accepting support and services and they realize the benefits of them. And I think as an educational society, we've gotten good at sort of identifying areas of need and being able to develop interventions to target them. So we're getting to Proposition 2 now, uh, and I guess, you know, it's funny, I, I have my little cheat sheet here, but I'm going to lead with the good news here. This proposition has no tax impact. We're looking to purchase some school buses, and I referenced that earlier. Very proud of our transportation department. We get rave reviews from our community about our bus drivers, our bus aides, about the way that, you know, that uh, things are handled within our transportation department, uh, but we need to be able to maintain our fleets uh, to be able to ensure that, you know, students get to and from school safely. Um, so we're looking to purchase three full-size buses. Uh, at $114,700, a uh, one 30-seat bus at $66,400, another 30-seat bus that has some variations at $64,300, a wheelchair bus uh, at $142,775, an SUV 
at 39.5. And then just again, I want to basically let you know that we have a Christmas club set up for this. There's no tax impact on this. So these reserves actually are in this, this particular one. It's an interest-bearing account. So you know, we actually we have the money in an account that actually does accrue some degree of interest that was referenced in an earlier slide. Uh, and we pull money out of here uh, to be able to purchase new buses. So total, we're looking to spend 650, $657,000. Uh, $75 to be able to purchase some new school buses. So, very worthwhile purchase. And finally, uh, proposition number three, our third proposition on there is uh, land purchase. Uh, so I'll just say a little bit about this. Um, right next door to East Senior High School, uh, on the eastern side, uh, next to the uh, access road, there's a piece of property. Uh, the property owner has uh, been a good neighbor, uh, and they are interested. Uh, they're, they're you know interested. We are looking to be able to purchase about two acres over there. Uh, of this property. So essentially what we want to do though is to, uh, this is going to help us in two different ways uh, if we're able to purchase this property. One is, uh, and one of the big ones here is, we're going to be able to pull that road over and away from the athletic fields. Anybody that's been by East Senior recently, you can see there's some great new facilities being put in there. They're going to benefit you know, not only our, you know, our physical education program, they're going to benefit our athletic program, our marching band. Uh, we'll be able to host events over there, so it's going to be nice. But the, one of the things that, that I've often heard you know, in addition to the fact that the road's a little choppy right now, is that that particular road is a little close to the athletic fields. So in purchasing this property, we'd be able to pull the road away from the athletic fields, uh, which I think would be highly beneficial from a safety standpoint. Another, uh, I think, very important point to note here is that we would be able to use that land to address some of our drainage needs. Um, you know, really, by, by no fault of anyone, the way that the, 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 the topography of the land sits next there, it doesn't lend itself to good drainage. The water just goes right into our property. So we're going to repair this road as a part of the capital improvement project, but we're going to greatly extend the life of the road uh, if we're able to set up some, you know, some appropriate drainage. So we'd get at it one way or another, but this would be the preferable way to go at uh, approaching the drainage issues that exist over there. And I will also note, too, couple more things that the property owners were gracious enough to allow us, and I may have mentioned this at our last meeting, but to uh, slightly modify a very small portion of this land in advance of any other purchase with really essentially no strings attached. They just said, yep, you can go ahead and do this. We did, we're going to be doing a little bit of regrading of the land, which will immediately have at least some benefit to us in terms of drainage. Uh, so again, being good neighbors, they allowed us to be able to do that, uh, and the board authorized us to be able to take that action. Mr. The, Beister, can yes? I also mention the safety if anybody's gone down that road, when you're going, it bends around. Oh, yeah. And the safety issue, if there's students there or, you know, people walking their dogs walk through there. So I think it's a great safety issue. I, I've seen, just to add to your point, I've seen, you know, more students and not just students, but people off the road. In the wintertime, it gets a little slippery, right. uh, especially because there's not great drainage either. So they, it's, you're S'ing around there. So I even helped a kid uh, get out the one time and got myself completely covered in mud. And... <laughs> It, uh, I, still, I still, I was a trooper. I finished the day at work, though. I'll just say it was a little, little, little worse for wear, but it worked out okay. So just throwing that out there. Um, and actually, what we're looking to do with this is fold this right into our capital improvement project because really we're, we're working on the land over there anyway. It just makes a lot of sense to be able to do that. So um, again, that's our third proposition. May I, if I could jump in. Please just do. To remind you, the last sentence read, the amount of taxes... Uh, that will have no tax impact because we're taking it out of the bond money. Yeah, there so you there go. there is no tax impact for proposition number three also. Can't believe I didn't say that, and well, thank you for saying that. No I, tax. I, I didn't want to jump in for anything <laughs> stupid, but I think that's a pretty important point, too. Sure. The other, if, if, seeing that I'm off, Did you repeat that? Yeah, <laughs> there are, is no tax <laughs> impact associated with propositions two and three. Mary brought up one issue about bending the curve of the road. We also wish to put a sidewalk for yes. safe walking of students between the middle school and the high school and yeah. from what we've learned from the architects and the surveyors that the problem with the road is really because of the water it undercuts wears and tears the road up so by improving the water we really are planning to get much more use out of that ro road for a longer period of time so that's the critical nature of that uh, we would do something else, but it would be much more visible and much more significant. Uh, we do have a plan to resolve it if it doesn't get passed. But uh, again, it's a no tax impact uh, project. Very important to note. Yes, thank you for pointing that out, Mr. Schultz. Can, I can't believe can I, I didn't. But out, but in for a second, Brian. I think it's always important. I know we always talk about it every year. Proposition number two 
some people think and you try to tell them the tax your taxes are not going to go up because of the bus and then they say where did you get the money from my simple explanation it's in a we have it in a piggy bank right now more or less right i know well, i'm being the, the i'm voters, simplifying the it voters but nine years ago approved the reserve which matt alluded to earlier in the reserves mm -hmm. and with interest earnings and with return to state aid because we get state aid at about 70 percent each year on an, on these bus purchases mm -hmm. that money was returned to the to build the reserve up so it really was money from interest earnings and money from state aid that we were able to set the money aside Inside. over time and um we're actually in all honesty i believe in the 19th year 18th or 19th year of having the reserve uh so it, it has really been a successful way to purchase buses without uh raising taxes mm -hmm. and at the same time not incurring interest to borrow money to buy buses right uh so that and that's really the only the the other way one of the other ways that you would buy them is to borrow money and then pay interest on on that purchase right i think it's like a win-win and the kids are safe who wants a kid on a bus that has a zillion miles on it nobody so absolutely thank you absolutely <clears throat> So before I get to the, the questions portion of it, I guess I just want to reiterate the fact that, you know, we're going to be facing some unknowns moving into the next school year. And one of the biggest things is we're going to have to see what the needs of our students are going to be. We're doing a lot of planning and anticipating right now. But, you know, the one thing we know is that we're going to have to reorient our students, you know, with the idea of being back in school again. And, you know, there's, that's going to require not just the academic support, but it's going to require that sort of social emotional support. Mm -hmm. There could be a certain level of anxiety associated with coming back together. Uh, you know, and, and I, I, I want to be a little careful about forecasting too far into the future, but I do think that's something that we have to be mindful of. Uh, I think we're going to have to make sure that we are able to respond quickly to things, but also to be proactive in our approach uh, at supporting our students in our school community. So, um, but there's you know, a lot of different things we're going to have to factor in, whether it's you know adjusting schedules or um, you know looking at different cleaning protocols, a whole host of different things. Even the way that we transport students to school, mm -hmm. um, a lot of different things that we're going to have to look at, and a lot of unknowns. We will work through all of them. I'm 100% confident that we will, but it's just a matter of being able to do that. Um, so, and with all these unknowns, again, I, we're waiting for, for some guidance from New York State that's going to be, you know, prescriptive in terms of helping us to be able to develop some of these plans. Um, I will say the, uh, the uh, so this is a unique, again, a situation where we are voting by absentee ballot. Uh, those ballots are due uh, into our office by uh, 5 o'clock p.m. on uh, t uh, June 9th. Uh, if you do not have the ballots, have all been mailed out at this point, so you should be receiving, if you haven't received them already, you should be receiving them, I would say, within the next day or so. If you need a ballot, uh, please contact uh, Mrs. Nicole Latza at, at, her, at our district office here. She's our district... Um, <laughs> yeah, contact Mrs. Nicole Lotz at our district office. She's been very busy lately. Um, but it, all this information is on our district website in terms of being able to access ballots. So. Um, and we appreciate everyone's consideration uh, of this budget. I appreciate uh, the team that came together to work to develop this budget. Uh, and I guess I would just like to ask if anybody has any questions that are, that's in this room right now. There was one question submitted to us, which I will address in a moment. But uh, Do you want to remind the people that they need to be in the office, so they probably should mail them at least by the 4th or 5th, yep. and also make sure you sign them. If they're not, if the... The envelope is not signed. It will not be a valid ballot. So make sure you do that. Also remind them that there's a box outside of oh, our yeah. district thank office that can put them in. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, uh, thanks to uh, our buildings and grounds department, we actually have a ballot box, a secure ballot box. It's big, it's orange, it's obnoxious, but it's right on our front door, uh, on the door to our district office. So if you're coming into district office, and this is for the folks at home, uh, you would go just as if you were going to our district office. It's uh, If you're facing the building, it's to the left-hand side. There's a big orange box that's labeled. Uh, you put your ballots in there, they will be secure, and we will be checking that box right up until 5 p.m. on June 9th. Is there anything else that we should mention about the I voting just wanted process? to jump in and say I know I, for one, did not get my ballot yet. So my suggestion, hold off a couple days um, because I think, I know they're coming because I know mm -hmm. some people got them, but I didn't get mine. I just asked Larry. He didn't get his yet either. So I'm sure they're coming, mm -hmm. you know, the post office. Sometimes I get stuff back and it says Rochester, and it's like, what? <laughs> we don't live in Rochester. So I would just hold tight for a couple of days before all the phone calls begin. Sure. We're still um, in May, and they're due June 9th. So. Yeah. Yeah, so we have time. 
I just want to say some of the problem, I think, is because of the primary election coming up uh, and it's people confusing. requesting for that, you know, which is not anything to do with the school district. So uh, it's been hard for them to separate the two ideas of requesting for the absentee ballots. But I just say so use the one, two, three method. Uh, it comes to you, you open it, you do the fill out the ballot, you put it in the smaller envelope, sign the outside of the smaller envelope uh, to return it, then put that in the return postage uh, ballot, you know, uh, envelope. You, it, it is a, a little bit of a process, and for people that aren't used to doing any kind of absentee ballots, uh, it's it's been a little bit difficult, mm -hmm. but it's what the governor has declared, and we are following all the rules. <laughs> right, it's not us doing it because no. I think it is sure. confusing for a lot of people. It is, it is, and yeah. the, and the two elections, yep. you know, coming up are confused. Yes, it, it's, and we have nothing to do with the primary election. We have it's just our separate one. Exactly. And the other point is just that the 18-year-olds can vote in ours, uh, even if they're not registered. So that's been another. Um, Mm -hmm. Question about them getting their ballots too. They have to request them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a, I have a question. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going to let Mr. Schultz get away so easy. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, a question that came was uh, arise from the community that was asked to me. What were we purchasing uh, with that SUV? <clears throat> was that a transportation vehicle it, for it special is, needs? It is a transportation vehicle for special needs. Mm -hmm. We have some instances where we have very small number of students going to, even, not necessarily even special needs, but they may, may, be, may be going to a school district in the southern tier or in the north, and there may only be one or two kids. So rather than route a large bus around, we've, we're, we're trying to pick off a couple of the more difficult, longer routes. Okay. They're really, it's not going to be, it's not a vehicle for the supervisor of transportation. It's a transportation vehicle to transport students to the appropriate location. So, you, you know, your question's appropriate. It is a unique one for us. We've never gone singular. I can tell you that some districts like Iroquois have a number of single vehicles that they use because of the number of locations they send out and the distance. Okay. They have a lot further, and examples could be that some of the parochial schools and the Christian schools in the northern part of the, the county, mm -hmm. um, and it's just cheaper. You, you, certainly it's cheaper to run well, a, 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 a four-wheeler than sense. it is an 18, you know, a, right. a, a big a big. Well, it's the first time I've ever seen an SUV in there. It's and me too. I, right. Okay. And I just didn't know if it was classified maybe as a twelve passenger van and then, you know, just kind of else it would have labeled labeled right. utility vehicle. No. Nine but passenger. It, it's, it's, passenger. it's not you know, because of its its design, we don't have to say number of passengers. Right. Okay. But it's not equivalent to a minibus okay. or so, the okay. smaller bus vehicles that were more we have uh, mm, more frequently purchased right I, I would think yeah. the public would understand that having yeah. that instead so. of you know yeah. driving even a short bus that holds 14 to 15 for two people yeah. probably would not be feasible well you also yes. remember another situation that occurs unfortunately frequently is my child missed the bus somebody's got to come and get the kid okay it a lot cheaper to run a vehicle like that out to quickly the student. than to get a bus yeah. you know and again it's a bus That's it's our point. bus driver who's driving it and it, it's just going to be used for those unique situations. It will be used all the time for certain routes. Good. Um, Larry, but it, it, it is new. It's, in all the years I've been here, Larry, yeah. it's the first time we've ever bought a vehicle like that. We've, yeah. we, the closest we've gotten to that is we bought a vehicle to equip, uh, carry the equipment for the mechanics when they have to go out to get a bus and bring it home. You yeah. know, and it, that's really a, it was a single-use type vehicle. Larry, through the years, we have transported uh, students to Batavia yes. for the uh, school, school for the for blind. Well, yeah, I, I, and, I've and, known you know, that with the, the smaller buses. I just thought, uh, yeah. I mean, it makes feasible sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, part, of, part of the, you know, and that is part of the answer. In the past, we had more of our uh, transportation to special needs students, and Matt would know this from working in the buildings and with special needs students in particular. Yeah. But because of the problems in the industry, there are not as many small carriers around. They've really kind of 
gone to bigger groups uh, like some of the people that I could mention. You may know one of them because we use them. You may see the names of two or three other companies. But we used to also have companies like Carrier Coach, Hamburg School yeah, Car, right. uh, and I can say those because I don't know that they're in business anymore. <laughs> and and they they would do a lot of that, Larry, because and that's the other tie-in. That was an outsource then. Yeah. yeah, we would outsource those because it was more efficient, you know, just for one student to go on a, on a ride. And we still do have, last time I noticed, I believe we have at least one student who still goes to the, the state school. Mm -hmm. You know, so we still have that uh, trip. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Are there any other questions from uh, from the group here? So I, uh, we did get one question. We actually set up uh, just kind of an anticipation of this budget hearing. Normally, you'd have the, the, the community, the public would be here. But obviously, under the circumstances, we couldn't do that. So uh, we arranged uh, an email, basically, an email uh, account for anybody that could email questions to us. We're going to maintain that as well. So if people do have questions, they can, they can email them to yeah. us. Just one more you know, venue, I guess, to be able to ask questions. And uh, Mrs. Latza, uh, our district clerk, is maintaining that. And she forwarded this to myself and Ms. Barris this morning. So uh, the question was, will salaries be affected for those teachers uh, that get paid extra for things such as coaching and or extra activities they do uh, since there has not been sports and musicals etc and then they asked uh, does this have any impact on next year's school budget so good questions uh, all of them to be quite honest with you um, so I will just say that by and large the work associated with the extracurricular work uh, it you know starts at the beginning of the year if you're talking about a club or a musical They've started these months and months and months ago, and the work's pretty much been done. Um, we may have had to cancel the actual musical itself, or maybe a, a session or two, a couple of sessions at the clubs haven't taken place uh, for the most part. But uh, in light of that, you know, we have paid out the, those stipends, uh, but there are some exceptions to that. So it's a little bit of a nuanced question for our, for our sports, our spring sports. Uh, the coaches in there, for the most part, have already, you know, when, when we had the closure, most of the coaches that had put in at least a couple of weeks of work uh, into the uh, to, into the season, in some cases more than that. But uh, and then at the end of the season, uh, as over the past you know week or so, we've actually been having those same coaches be responsible for collecting equipment and connecting with students and whatnot. So uh, we didn't pay them their full uh, amounts. We paid them 20%. We prorated what they had, and that was agreeable to them. So that that answers, I guess, that part of the question there specifically to sports. Um, Mr. Schultz, yes. I, I would just if, jump in at this point, uh, as you asked me to do when I felt like talking. <laughs> um, there's, there's also the thought process that, you know, didn't you save a lot of money from this year's budget being yeah. closed? Our purchasing in, of ordinary materials and supplies, equipment, everything, usually ends each year March 31st. We closed, I believe, somewhere around the 17th, 16th, 16th. 17th, 18th. So we really only saved about 15 days of purchasing. We did stop it immediately because we felt we needed to use that money for any health, safety, welfare. So there wasn't 12 months of non-spending. And the reason we set March 31st, by the way, as a spending date is we want purchases bought out of this budget to be used for the kids for this budget, not to stock stuff up at the end of the year for next year. We have a budget for next year. so. Uh, people followed that guideline, and by March 31st, they were supposed to stop spending. And in most instances, um, I think the only thing we've been looking at is really uh, hand cleaning, masks, uh, things that we've had to get on the emergency basis. Um, the other thing that we have to keep in mind, and, and it relates to the question, and I know, Matt, I hope I'm not walking on your lines, but the Federal CARES Act, which guaranteed 900,000 plus of our state aid for next year, required us to maintain and make payment on all existing contracts that we we're in. Now, there are a couple areas that the state has not clearly um, clarified for us, and we're working on clarification on that. But that could mean, for example, um, pre-K students uh, and their facilities are still being paid by the state aid that we receive for them through June 30th, based on what the attendance days were, which will be through June 18th, if I'm correct. 16th, yeah, for the students. 16th, yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. 16th. Uh, so I just wanted to clarify those points. Um, and if there's any other questions on that, Matt, I'd be glad to answer. But I think, I, I'm hoping you weren't gonna do that, but. I was, but you did a much better job. 
<laughs> okay. I, was, well, I, have, just, just, I did have it on there. I yeah. just want to step in on the spending plan. Uh, the state always is supposed to have their budgets ready by April 1st for us, as you know. So the spending plan is in sync with that, too. And um, it kind of starts our newer newer time. Yeah, one of the regrettable April. things of this whole time frame and the way this is all played out is, as Matt alluded to, most districts have most of their budget done. And we, in fact, had our hearing here in early May. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we had projections for sales tax, right. fees for continuing ed, fees for after school program, expectations on Medicaid. Mm -hmm. uh, those are not going to come through. And um, we, we expect at this point, as we've used in our projections to get to year end, uh, probably anywhere up to a 50% loss in sales tax for the last quarter and the accrual period that we normally do, which is an accounting thing that Matt would make fun of me because it's an accounting thing. Um, so we, we anticipate, for example, in sales tax, not getting a million five that we thought we were going to get. So it's not, there is some savings, as Matt alluded to, with some of the coaches and some purchases. Um, the, bigger, the bigger thing is the other side of the ledger. We have losses in the neighborhood of $2.7 million on the revenue side, which is, is causing me great agenot. Uh, and we're start next year, as you know, when you adopted the budget, we're appropriating $4,600,000. And we were talking to you two months ago now and saying we are working long term for a plan to get our budget in order because we can't spend that forever. Well, guess what? That accordion just came closed, and we will be working even harder uh, to do that. And uh, everything we've done over the last two months, largely on the phone, um, has been to achieve those goals. And that includes already uh, having expectations of not filling positions. We're not quite at the point of making up for the lost revenue that we think we already are going to lose for next year. This and is not other than us. other than mentioning it, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to talk any more about what could happen from the state with a 20% state aid cut. Yeah. But we have had uh, Jan Lewandowski and I, who uh, have had a number of discussions with Matt, and they're not fun. And um, you know, we have to plan, and we do plan for the worst case scenario. Just never thought that this was going to be the worst case scenario. When I think I talked to the board two months ago, this wasn't even a, a passing thought. So we've all had to change. And having been here as many years and being um, rather old, um, none of us have ever seen what we're going through right now. And there isn't a playbook or a series of actions that are laid out. We will be developing that on the financial end too. And that will certainly be, uh, as quickly as we know, getting information to the board so that they can make decisions about hiring and uh, any other staffing and programmatic type decisions. Um, you know, as they say, I don't like to be Danny Downer, but mm -hmm. our job is to report to the board and to the superintendent. Um, I just wish we had more, you know, of a pathway of an understanding of what exactly is going to happen. Well, mm -hmm. be assured that we are working hard legislatively. And uh, there are some things in Washington that we are pleading for, pleading for, because it is a unique situation, Brian. You, know, you and I have been around for 110 yeah. years, and we have never seen anything like this. Nope. But there are some bills that we're working on, and we're really lobbying. Did you say you and I have been around for 110 <laughs> years? <laughs> what was it like during the Spanish? <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. I'm not. I'm I just just because my hair is getting a little whiter. Uh, <laughs> um, Jan, do I do. I have to I, admit that I was on the board when we hired you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was here too. I think. Yeah, I was. One of, the, I know. one of the best things that we've. I done. think. I think your your point is well taken. We're trying very hard. And, and our hope is that What's doesn't have hope? to come become part of our planning decision. Yeah. yeah. Because that's going to be that will be um, something far beyond. It'll be. Actually, it'll be more like what happened to us in 2009 at that point. That's, yeah. that's true. And yeah. that would require draconian efforts. Mm -hmm. other, other steps we hope we can handle through management of fund balance and uh, management of staffing. 
because quite frankly, any, everyone in this room knows your staffing accounts for 80% of your budget. Right now. And, and we have to uh, work on that end in the long term if, if there's a need to do balancing in the budget. Uh, we are fortunate we are in a good position, as Matt alluded to earlier, with reserves, but that can be gone in a heartbeat, is which, what is what happened for those that were on in 2009. And remember, that fund balance went very quickly uh, over a four-year period. As uh, we talk about the fund balance and where we are, uh, I like to say that you know, going into this year, I think as the board, we did discuss a lot of things about costs and things that we were hearing from everywhere, uh, focusing the money on our students and safety and paying off loans and really kind of looking at a lot of things. Um, I think this year, um, with the things that we're looking at and how we're going, I'm more concerned about the following year. I mean, that's if the way that we look at it and we need to be long-term over that. Um, and I like the idea that we're gonna reevaluate every position that uh, comes up, um, but without having them positions, I'm also concerned is one thing, what we're here for is our students, right? I mean, that's what we're here for. And we have to be able to provide the best education possible for these kids. In a safe. Yes, way. and then in a safe environment yeah. and a good place. And I know we gotta play the hand that's dealt to us, but I think at this point, the board is gonna you know, really step up and ownership and really be able to move this along and m set the standards. So I definitely look forward to the next year and uh, just keep on doing what we're trying to do here. Okay. Thank well, you. Also, the direction from the governor, we have no idea, I mean, what his anticipation is going to be reopening schools and where yeah. he wants the numbers and stuff like that. And that's another concern that I hope, you know, we're all addressing in your, in your scenarios of reopening. I know it sounds like a, it's I know it sounds like an old cliche but at some point I would not even like to rely on the governor you know we run our own thing you know uh, we grew up with we, we grew up with rainy day funds most of us we grew up with things that you know you're prepared for bad things that when they happen mm -hmm. how much can we do and then they tell you to spend them down because you have too much yeah. you know so there, there's a lot of tricks and things that go on that you know most people wouldn't even realize you know they say oh you got you know X amount in there you got to spend it and then well, we here we are a year or two years later when we could have used that money and we wouldn't even have to pass that along to the people. So I think looking at reserves and looking at other things maybe at some point we can possibly do uh, as a group. You know, even if we maybe we could do a reserve for, you know, um, something of, of, of a pandemic fund, you know, a reserve. I don't know. I mean, something that we can at least get together out there and talk about some things, you know, that we wouldn't be then able to... Uh, be held hostage by the, you know, by New York State, you know. So thank you. I just want to point out too some of the expenses that we've incurred too. If you think about it, like uh, instantly we put together a food uh, food distribution program, and I mean, tens of thousands of meals we've distributed so far over the course of this closure. Uh, our food services department's really stepped up in that regard, and we've utilized our transportation department as well to transport some of these uh, to some of our uh, uh, other areas. Uh, as well as daycare too. We immediately put together a high quality daycare program for uh, the uh, parents, uh, I'm sorry, for children of uh, first responders and uh, essential personnel. So I mean, these are things that, you know, we're gonna hope to recoup some money from FEMA for. We're in the process of making those applications now, but those aren't, those aren't quick. You don't, you don't get reimbursed for those quickly. So I'm gonna remain optimistic that we will, but in the, in, in the interim, we need to be able to account for that money as well. And it's, it's not insignificant, so. And has there been any word that we might have to continue that lunch program through the summer? So we're, it's a great question, Larry. So we're actually waiting. There was a, the governor mentioned it uh, in a press conference last week, but there's been no executive order issued uh, as of this point. It indicates that we have to be able to do that. So uh, we've already engaged our food services department and uh, the folks that are providing our daycare right now just to have some talk about some scenarios and do a little bit of planning in the event that we do need to be able to continue that. The executive order is the executive order. So, but as of this point, nothing's been issued. We are monitoring that situation, though. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up. I emailed yeah. Matt on that same question. Yeah, yeah. Just, well, I'm just hoping waiting. that, like the summertime programs as we were kids, we're all in the parks, that would take mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, he might just say, well, while you guys are there, keep going. Right. 
it's interesting if you look at like cities, even small cities like Lackawanna or the city of Tonawanda, they, they, they actually, that's, that's something that they've, uh, they, it's just part of their regular routine. So if you talk to some of those districts in Buffalo as well, I know when I was a kid, mm-hmm. I'd go over to Cass Park and, 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 you know, scoop up a free lunch every now and then too. I'd be out there skateboarding. So, I mean, those have been in existence for quite some oh. time now. Uh, yeah, I go back when I was at Riverside. That's what we yeah. did. We'd hit, we'd hit School right. 65 and the Riverside Park <laughs> <laughs> if it was chocolate milk. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, we have done some of that in, at Winchester. I know uh, the sure. playgrounds. Uh, you know, the past summers. So we'll see. Yeah, I, I mean, we have to do what we yeah. have to do. And you know what? If it's for the kids that are going to eat, yep. where else would the money? You know, I, 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 we yeah. definitely all agree. Good That's where we want the money to go. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, we, some kids don't have meals during the day. It's funny that we're finding that out. Yes. You know, that what Thanks, you do, Dad. you know, and what you see. Mm-hmm. And, and just to, I guess, to add to that, for those, those that don't know, we've been working with Feed More Western New York uh, to, on Fridays, they actually bring in bags of groceries. So anybody that comes on a Friday to pick up the meals, they actually, they, they benefit from getting a bag of groceries to kind of help tide them over the weekend as well. So that's nice. another so nice that's benefit. Great. Oh, they have great that's organization. Wonderful. So, yeah. Are we doing it at all locations or? Yeah. Good, beautiful. My fellow board members know some of them that my dream is the federal government yeah. would keep their hands out of curriculum but put all their money into feeding every yeah, kid. I've said that before. <laughs> I've said it often, but yeah. do you realize hungry kids have a hard time learning? Absolutely. Let's feed them all and then uh, let the states do and, and local peop- <laughs> boards do the curriculum. <laughs> I agree. So as far as the budget's concerned, were there any other questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That was a great presentation. Um, and if you, like uh, Mr. Bicerat said, if you do have any additional questions, if you just email them to the district, um, that we can respond to those and uh, get you the answers. So we appreciate it. And again, remember to vote. Remember to get your ballots in. Um, one per person, please. And, um, you know, we'll hopefully go forward again for the kids. Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn this part of the meeting? I'll move. Okay, Mrs. Jarzik, can I have a second? I'll second. Mrs. Bussey, um, any discussion? I do, one more. Okay. Uh, about the public questions, say because we're streaming and not live streaming, um, if the public has any other questions they, from today's meeting, mm-hmm. they can just email that email address and follow up can. on any questions. Okay, they certainly good. can. I, I think it right. makes sense to keep that that not just for budgetary questions. No. I think that just to keep that it's it's one more venue that people can right. use to be able to access us and ask questions I, of us. So and I think your, your administration and us we've really worked on the transparency Absolutely. part and to see that we've it's been taking away from us now. You know what I mean? To where we can't have people in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's very imperative that we try to get the proper information and, and the correct information to the people. And I think after they watch today and they have a question, they can sit at their computer tomorrow and at least email or email you a question. There you go. Um, and then at least get the response that they're looking for. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. sure. Um, can I throw something out now, or can sure. we uh, go ahead? Okay. Sure. Um, I want to just be clear here because I get confused easily sometimes. Um, we're live. We're not live streaming, but we're live. Right? People can watch, but they can't interact. Common. Is that what, what the right. deal is right yes. now? Yes. Yep. So I'm, I wave, I wave to people. People mm-hmm. can see me. Yes. Yes. Um, someone is watching, and they actually sent me a message during the, uh, during the board meeting. What a great, the slides are showing up great online. They look great. So it just occur, it kind of occurred to me, there could be at one of our other meetings, we could set up, whether we could check an email or we could check a, a text, or we could set something up where people can ask questions at the end of a meeting. Can we look into that? Would it be possible? Uh, certainly. The only thing I would want to make sure is that we were able to give a thoughtful and well-researched Understood. response. That's Understood. all. Just like when the public asks questions, you know, we typically don't respond right there on the moment. But yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying. I just happened to get a message uh, um, from someone watching saying yeah. how amazing the slides look. Great job, guys. And I'm like sitting there, and then Larry said we weren't live, and I'm like, well, this is weird. So I want to get clarification. But if yeah. they're watching live and they're able to send a comment, maybe there's a way for them to send a question to us. Sure. It was, it's, in, it's interesting you bring that up because I was, you know, we were, as we were putting this together, and really this is a credit to Mr. Pacer, Mr. Kurzinski, and Mr. Ferkins in terms of being able to, to, to make that happen. I was wondering if we were just going to be putting the camera, so like a picture on a picture, I think Larry, as yeah. you said before, but the fact that we're able to broadcast and people, as we were doing the presentation, were looking at the slides on the screen, much clearer and able, you know, easier to see. I, I, that's a nice... Uh, Nice way to look at it. And if you look at go to the website too, uh, you just click right on the website to 
to see. So anybody that's sitting watching at their laptop right now is looking, they're watching it right from our district website. They didn't have to jump through any hoops to be able to watch this. So we really improved and enhanced our ability to, to, to stream these meetings. So I just want to thank uh, the gentleman in the back over there uh, behind the cameras for all their work on this. So yeah, great job. take a bow. <laughs> they're bowing. They're, they're bowing. bowing. <laughs> yeah, and again, if you have questions, make sure you get in, in touch with the district. Uh, we want to answer everybody's questions, and like you said, it's it's difficult times. It's something new, and hopefully we don't have to go through this again, but you never know. Okay, any other comments, concerns? I would oh, also do like to this? thank everybody for showing up today to is do this. this. On oh. Business on the business part? Or is no, no, we're on, we're, we're this actually is budget. adjourning we're the, the budget. budget part. We're going into the yes, budget. yeah, we haven't gone to the second part of the meeting. Okay, so all in favor of adjourning this part of the meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, carried um, seven to zero. Okay, so now we'll go into our, um, our regular board meeting, and um, there's, okay, so six and seven for personnel. We have no additions, but we have some miscellaneous appointments, some coaching um, appointments, and reports. So why don't we have a motion to um, accept those? Can I have a motion? I'll move. Okay, so this it would be eight, um, eight up to eight. Yep. Um, no, eight, no eight, 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 eight to nine. Yep. Eight to nine. Um, so Mrs. Bussey, can I have a second? I'll second. Okay, Mr. Seabird, um, any discussion about the uh, the coaching position appointments, which are for the fall. Um, I don't think there's any, yeah, for, for just for the fall. And then any of the reports. So any discussion? Okay. Um, all in favor of accepting them? Aye. 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 And uh, any opposed? Carried seven to zero. Okay, then we have um, new business. So we had an audit report that we had to respond to. Uh, we have our school lunch budget. Uh, we had to transfer some money from our fund balance. Um, Erie won BOCES, textbooks, um, combining sports teams for the fall and the spring, um, a contract to do some services in the middle schools, and um, we are approving the contract for our community relations coordinator Jen Flores. So um, can I have a motion to accept those? I will move. Okay, Mrs. Bussey, can I have a second? Second. Mr. Kwiatkowski, um, any discussion on those? I, I'm very excited about 10D, getting our um, Chromebooks for all our students. I'm very excited about that. Thank you. Can I, can I just say, I actually spoke with Mr. Perkins, who heads up uh, all of our, our network services and everything. One of the things, he got a question today. Somebody emailed him and asked, I want to make sure my child has a, you know, has a uh, the right computer for next year moving forward. Uh, what what kind should I get? I, I, nice, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I I don't want to tell anybody not to buy their their uh, child a computer, but we are purchasing enough Chromebooks, uh, so we're actually moving uh, much more rapidly than we initially intended. But we're uh, we're moving toward one to one devices uh, for K through 12 for our students. So really, we're working to be able to provide Chromebooks. Uh, for all of our students now that uh, just and I'm going to mention this as well we're going to be collecting the ones that we have distributed thus far because frankly some of them might need to be you know, fixed up a little bit mm -hmm. and uh, we just want to make sure they're all in good working order for the fall but our plan is to redistribute them uh, in the coming school beginning of the next school year so just if anybody's saying I got to get a computer for next year hold off if you if you need to right if you still want to buy it buy it um, but we're, we're looking to be able to equip all of our students with devices but that was one of the board's goals, and Absolutely. I'm really right. excited right. about school. Yeah, we had worked on that before you, all of this took place, um, and so this kind of just accelerated our purchase And our if purchase I could just say, these. we didn't find a magic pot of money. Really, what we did was we took a look at our overall technology budget and how we were looking to be able to allocate some resources and said, okay, how can we shuffle things around a little bit to be able to provide this? Because this is clearly a need, a pressing need. And it was board goal and a pressing need, and it's great that we can, you know, we're going to be able to move forward in this direction. Cool so. For students. It's mm -hmm. cool. And you made a Mother's Day too, I bet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I didn't see the response to his email back, but yeah. I just yeah. yeah. Or it was a father. Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't recall. <laughs> you know. No more snow days then. <laughs> <laughs> Careful there, Mr. Beanie. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, any other discussion on any of the new business? Okay, um, can I have a motion to approve all of those? Oh, no, we already no, did a motion. Did. Can I have a vote? Aye. Um, all in Aye. favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, carried seven to zero. Um, any other discussion about anything else that anybody has? Um, uh, I would like to bring up a topic uh, for a little bit of discussion. Um, I know that a while ago we set up, or the district set up a, a committee about the graduation uh, uh, activities for the students. And it was, uh, I think it was students and, uh, we weren't involved in any of this, but I think it was students and um, uh, uh, administrators staff, and administrators teachers. And, yeah. teachers. <clears throat> and at the time when that happened, uh, some of the students mentioned uh, that maybe later in the summer they would like to do something also. Uh, I think it's great that the drive-in uh, program has been, I know it's been worked on a lot and uh, it's planned and so forth. Uh, nothing wrong with that at all and uh, enjoyable. But I, I think we need a little discussion about now that things are opening up a little more. The curve is better according to the governor, <laughs> you know. And uh, there are, by August 1st, there probably will be some more liberties. And I'm just wondering if we could talk about getting another a committee to continue, not to cancel the other, but to plan a little something for around the 1st of August that would be a little more traditional for our kids, where they could wear their caps and gowns and hey, walk across, not across the stage necessarily, but across our football field or somewhere uh, that would be a little more traditional and a little more personal to our district here. Uh, we have a big football field, or, or there may be other ideas, but maybe a committee could be formed to look into it uh, for, for, for the sake of the traditions. Uh, I just think, you know, to, to have music playing, I guess I'm just old fashioned that way, but pomp and circumstances, you know, and uh, just let them do that. It could be done outdoors and there can be restrictions in the, how many, uh, you know, the distances in, in, in the, in the uh, Stands or any other ideas, I don't know, but something I know, a little Mr. more Bystrat, personal and traditional. You had some conversations, didn't you, recently yeah. with the principals? Yeah. So yeah. if you could kind I'm of just a let sentimental us in on those. Spirit yeah. here. <laughs> you know, I don't know that anybody disagrees with you, Jan, in terms of just wanting to be able to get together in that more traditional sense. I've had a few parents reach out to me as well, and yeah. some students. Uh, this is not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so I just I, to give you a little bit, and you, you've kind of uh, accurately identified kind of some of the processes that have been followed so far, and I can kind of finish the, the sentence a little bit, I guess, so to add All to right. your thoughts. So absolutely, you're right. Uh, we actually did. I, I was uh, part of a Google Meet, because of course we're not together, but part of a Google Meet with our uh, high school administrations at both high schools, two separate meetings. We had our uh, uh, class advisors uh, for the seniors and also the uh, student council representatives as well, where we discussed some options, basically. Throughout this whole, I, I will call it this whole uh, closure, we've been working in close uh, communication with the Erie County Health Department right. uh, and just taking advice uh, as far as what the commissioner has mm -hmm. felt has been appropriate. So, and you know, when we asked, uh, you know, basically the, the uh, health commissioner, did she foresee, and I've got better news at the end of this, state, this sentence, so hang with me, uh, did she foresee us having the ability to be able to plan something for some sort of in-person uh, get-together at some point during the summer? And you know her, her response was he really did not feel it was going to be uh, appropriate or, or uh, we'd be safe to be able to do that. She doesn't have a crystal ball either. She was very quick to point out, um, and nor, nor do I. So the way that we approached it with our students was we basically said, look, time's, time's kind of wasting. We're actually looking at a virtual graduation, which believe it or not, actually has time slots. They stream these movies, so you, you have to sign up for it in advance. Plus the drive-in was, you know, other districts are taking advantage of that, so we, we didn't want to miss out on that, that opportunity. Um, so, you know, working with the kids, they were excited about that, but they asked the same thing that you just said. They said, in the event that things the open event, up a little bit yes. uh, later in the summer, you know, would you be open to doing something? And they, yes. and, and they, they were very open to the idea of something. Okay. So, you know, in the moment, basically, we, we had said to the students, yeah, we would be looking, you know, we would absolutely be open to something. We can't say exactly what that would be or how it would be rolled out. We really, mm -hmm. really can't. Uh, the one thing we'd want to be sensitive to, though, I think, is once you get past a certain point in, in August, it, it may be right. much more difficult to be able to do. Yeah. We'd want because to be sensitive to that. Because of college and getting a college but and people are military. You know, but, yeah. yeah, but around the first, yeah. you know, about the first of August, who knows? Things are may open up quicker than we think. Uh, the, and I have been very, very careful. I want to tell you. I mean, I I disinfect my mail before I 
open it, you know, and all of the things. I mean, my husband and I have been extremely careful at the demand of our kids, you know, that we, because uh, we're not teenagers anymore. So uh, they, uh, we've been very careful, and they follow rules, you know, with the masks and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. But uh, I just think that we ought to look into it, if we could just have something in case conditions we, are. Yeah, Other districts yeah. have done, and I know they're smaller than we are, I know all those things, but other districts have adjusted already, and I thought maybe we could give a little hope uh, that <laughs> at least look into it. I will say, I think I believe it's really important for any of our decisions to be based on the medical professional's That's recommendations, true. and, and I, I know you're not saying anything different, so I just, at the end of the day, I, I in my, the back of my mind, and we've had conversations about as recently as yesterday, to be quite honest with you, with some of the high school mm -hmm. administration, just to say, look, let's let's do some, let's let's have some conversation about what it might look like if we were to try to pull something together. Right. Um, actually, I'm sorry, it wasn't yesterday; it was today, this morning. The days tend to blur together <laughs> they a little all bit, kind of but, run together. Um, but we absolutely have had some conversations about mm -hmm. what that might look like. Mm -hmm. um, I think the good news here is, in the event that there were to be some sort of, uh, uh, if it would be to, appropriate and safe for us to be able to gather in some sort, in, in a different sense like that, uh, or in a, in a more traditional sense, I don't think we would have any lack of uh, people or support to try to make it happen, even if it had to be in a somewhat expedited manner. I think people would be tripping over themselves. That's the, that's the verbiage I used with our students when I talked to them mm -hmm. back several mm -hmm. weeks ago. People would be tripping over themselves to assist and be a part of it. So. It would be nice possibly to have it on the campus. That's what I'm talking about, outside home. Of campus. I know a lot of colleges do that. Mm -hmm. um, they have their graduation sure. outside on their campus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, at least have a conversation. Amber, Amber maybe does like it every year. Jan well. mentioned a committee, something. I know a lot of parents are very concerned mm -hmm. over it yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I just want to interject. I believe, and if I'm, again, misspeaking, correct me, tell me I'm wrong, the drive-in does not the drive-in happening does not stop something else from possibly happening. Right. Definitely right. not. I believe That's that there's a fear out there that, okay, drive-in's done, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. There may still be an opportunity to do, whether it be show up, walk on the stage, get your picture taken, walk out, get in your car and leave, football field. What, you know, there may be an opportunity if things change. The drive-in does not end that. That question was asked directly by our students and our answer was we're definitely open to something else if, if, if the situation if the circumstances permit we are definitely open to something else and no this would not preclude almost like right. the pup so, rallies yeah. they have I mean, and if, stuff like that I, I would just say to the community if you're still hoping something happens and working for it don't just skip the drive in to make a point that's all I, you know, yeah that's a good like point consider, I'm glad you said consider that. that it's not going to stop anyone from and I mean I will support personally whatever decision the, the, the student leaders, the parents, the teachers, the administrators, mm -hmm. you, you guys all make. Um, but <clears throat> showing up at the drive-in isn't going to stop an event in the future if no. it possibly could happen. No, this is, I this, like that. Yeah. And it's not, it's not like we're saying, well, the drive-in, we, we're not going to do it. No, uh, they, that's an event that's been planned and it, you know, the, the, all of the... But I believe I think we're committed to that. That's yes. right. Yeah. Correct. You know, um, but I think we need to yeah, be open much, to yeah. do something around the 1st of August if... The area is open yeah. more. We, we just we didn't want to miss out on the opportunity. No, absolutely. We have, to lock, we have to lock that in. And if, if yeah. I may speak real quick on this yeah. rule, I think that uh, we as the Board of Education are in charge of one person, right? That's that gentleman over there, right? <laughs> That's that? Matthew. Right? Nah. The guy with the beard. Matthew. The guy uh, with Mr. Bystruck. Yeah. Um, I feel that he has his, as I always say, his coaching staff mm -hmm. as we do the thing. He has his principals in place who have the pulse of the schools, the, the temperature of the room of their schools. They've met with their student body. They've met with everybody. That is for them to decide, mm -hmm. right? right? I mean, that, I mean we, we do answer to the people, okay? And we do ask them to, but as always what we have formed, we want them to do the chain of command and reach out to their people. And I just don't feel that that's for us to do and say we need this done well i'm suggesting that they look into it and I, I think we can do that because uh it's not canceling one over the other or anything but it's a possibility well then and, what could be I, next I, changing lunches i, I mean um, i just don't want to you know i mean i don't want to get involved into micromanaging i, I have faith no, and then that's what we've done and is instilled yeah. in our superintendent to guide direct this direction of the board but I also think we need to respond sometimes when there is some uh, 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 
volume of questioning uh, what could else be done. You know, is, is there something else that could be done? And I have been sent already uh, ideas of what all of these other schools were doing and so forth. So, I mean, it, it's an issue. It's an issue, and I think we need to respond to that. And I'm not saying to cancel the drive-in, Larry. Yeah, I, I didn't say you cancel know. the drive-in. No. I did, at no point did no, I say cancel I the drive-in. No, a lot of work is, but well, knowing that the kids originally had said, could we do something later in the summer maybe, you know, if things got better. Well, since they had that desire, that committee, and some of them on that committee had expressed that, I mean, it said. And knowing that, I said, let's leave Let's let's leave that an open option and uh, get well. You're one seventh, get, so that's not just am, your option. It's our option as the board to saying. decide to what Matt Maybe, to do. If if enough of you don't agree with me, then it's dead. I, I I understand that, but the whole thing <laughs> is is we're getting involved into something that is is not really. I don't feel the board of education. As now I'm going to say one seventh. I don't feel that that's our our position well, to be involved. In, commencement always has been ours. A commencement is one thing. That's on a regular part. This is not regular. So if, the, if all student bodies agreed to having this and teachers agreed and we went and we did everything, now it changed. Now what after that? They do their graduation at the drive-in. If they think of another idea of a picnic, they think about some other things that went on. There's other uh, things that they could do. Yeah. You know, but now it comes now who's responsible for it. Yeah, whatever. You know, there's a lot of other things that okay. go on to this than just... You know, I, I have a question. First of all, I apologize if I missed it on one of the zillion emails that we get. <laughs> can, Matt, can you walk us through exactly, I've heard it's going to be at the drive-in, I've heard you got to stay in cars. I haven't heard exactly what is going to happen. So the, the kids actually is. Right? I that. And I thought maybe I missed it in an email. Oh. But go ahead. Yep. So what's going to happen basically is the kids are going to get, we're working with a company called Herf Jones. There's two kind of components to this. Herf Jones is actually the company. They do yearbooks and class rings and things like that. Herf Jones is actually creating a, a movie basically based on our kids. So our kids are going to get a chance to upload pictures of themselves. All right. So they've already actually, these senior, for instance, they, they distributed caps and gowns the other day, yesterday and they, they gave them directions on how to do this. Uh, they also put a quote in too. And then what they're going to do is they're going to scroll through. They're making a student movie. Within that movie as well is going to be, I'm um, spares a speech actually so you're still going to have the speech I'll it'll, I'll have a speech it'll be brief because we're trying to be respectful of a time frame uh, your, your valedictorian I mean your, your, some of your more traditional things will be included in this movie that'll be premiered at the drive-in is how it works out so and the transit drive-in has agreed to be able to provide us uh, you know the space and then they have enough screens to be able to accommodate us West Senior was scheduled for the June, uh, July 13th East Senior scheduled for July 8th uh, I believe 9 o'clock start time for both of them uh, families pull in uh, they'll basically, with, and I know there's probably some other little surprises I don't want to really give away at this point, but families would uh, pull into the drive-in, they'd view the movie. Uh, I believe there might be some senior video shown afterward as well, just brief senior videos shown afterward as well. Um, so it's, it's the, and actually I will say too that uh, the movies are going to be streamed at that time. So basically grandma and grandpa who live in Florida can also watch the movies too. Oh, nice. Can watch the, the nice. graduation movie as well. So that's, that's a nice thing as well. So. And then that'll be up on our website. So nobody. I don't know if we can put it on our website because oh, I think it's okay. no. I think it's uh, copyright protected. I think that's why they're okay. live streaming at that given time. Will it go don't, on YouTube or something? Or? Uh, don't quote me. Don't on know. That. Not okay. 100 certain. All right. So, so there will be no. There will be no diplomas handed out. They'll no. be mailed. Yes, we're mailing out the diplomas. Yeah, they never get them that diplomas. night anyway, yeah, so yeah. that won't change, right? Shh, don't they tell anybody. The oh. They think they're getting them. <laughs> they get the cover. <laughs> um, so. All right, so everybody's in their cars. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bystrick will be in his car, right? Mr. Beattie will be in his car and the kids. And when they say the kid's name, the kids shouldn't be getting out of the car? No, that, no. The driving actually has... I just some, want to kind of get yeah, a Yeah, the driving has some specific rules uh, regarding, you know, people basically staying kind of in their in their zone. So they, they may okay. be... We still have to clarify that, but they may be able to sit out like in a chair in front. They actually have reduced the number of slots from what I understand so that people can be... You know, they have a little more space in between the cars, so if yeah. people wanted to yeah, have the, the tailgate open or something like that to be able to watch the movie or something like that, they probably could. And so. how many spaces are there at the drive-in? Uh, I have no idea. No, I don't know exactly. I just know there's more than enough to accommodate is what we've been told. So okay. there are done three the screen, There's three screens yeah. there, too. Yeah. There's five screens. Yeah. There. I think so, you're right, yeah. So I think well, maybe they're all just facing all directions so I can see. Oh, so like you'll be going here to this screen and someone will be here like they're at two different movies? Yes. Is it? Okay. Yep. All right. And then everybody will leave. Mm -hmm. 
So, Isn't there a movie after for students? Was you know their what? question? I, I think that's yeah. I, I don't know if, if that's happening. I think that's been. Nine. I think they were more interested in seeing like a senior video. I know for the one uh, as opposed to an actual movie. So I don't believe there's actually the okay. movie after. Because we remember, discussed that right yesterday. It, 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 yeah, it, actually, I just found that out this morning. Okay. Uh, but I believe that was. It's a pretty late start time to begin with. To be honest with you, it's say. nine o'clock, and then you're going to have. I think it's an hour to an hour and a half, and then you know I think you know, just to get people everybody in place. Um, it's going to be a pretty late night, I think, from that respect. And I believe yeah. that some of the feedback from students was they weren't necessarily interested in seeing a movie. That, that's what I just heard this okay. morning. So. And then I also heard from somebody that you'll be able to tune it in on your radio. Is that true? Or? I think just like at the regular drive-in, yeah. I think yeah, it's... Yeah. Drive-in forever. Yeah. They don't have speakers anymore. They don't have speakers no more. Right. Yeah. I didn't know if there were speakers outside. No, I think it's a no. frequency that yeah. you tune into. Like, you know, I think it's okay. 88 point something, something they tell you. Yes. Yeah. 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 You yes. put it on a radio station. So if grandma's watching from Florida... How is she seeing it after the fact? No, I think right no. live stream, right at that moment in time. So there, there, there would be sound with that. Oh, okay. Yeah, because there's sound of the video. And Mr. Pacer was nice enough today. Um, I was able to uh, record my speech, and at the end, where I have to say, um, you know, that I grant the diplomas. So we put that all on video today. Good. So oh, it was perfect. nice. Yeah, I'm recording mine coming up in the. June 13th. Just in time to get a haircut. Just in time to... I'm letting it go. That's it. No <laughs> <laughs> hearing. <laughs> Tuesday. Gonna be, they're going to be yeah. open. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Well, well, let me just okay. continue. Thank you for that because I, I couldn't yeah. picture it all. Yeah. I, th okay. I think that's wonderful. And I'm not saying anything it's about canceling any of that. I'm just saying I wish that we could have just a group of people. And, and they are looking into that. Into yes. a possibility yes. Yes. of something that's a little <clears throat> more home and a little more traditional right. so that mom can stand up and take a picture of that cap and gown person. And right. I think that on our own yes. turf <laughs> somewhere. Right. And you, you just, and but you so, just don't is, know what the circumstances will be we don't, at the time. We don't know yes. if it's going to be open enough to do right. that. But, right, uh, yeah. Things are opening up. I mean, the fact that I'm sitting here yeah. <laughs> talking to you at the well, my desk is here. I, I think know. that's the okay. whole. I just want to so, make sure that. But I just want to keep that open. That this doesn't end it. The conversation, yep. like the one does not preclude the other. Come yes. out with the gavel and said there will be no more right. discussion yeah, ever right. again. There's Correct. there's an right. ongoing discussion yeah. because we all are cognizant of you know the parents and the students yeah. and everything else. And but we also have to be cognizant of the health concerns. So that's why we're going with the drive-in, and then if there's a possibility afterwards, um, they are, you know, they would consider, but I, nothing I will, is final with that. I, I will say one of the concerns uh, that has been consistent, uh, consistently expressed by the health department and other health officials as well is that people won't necessarily abide by rules if they are put into place. If they were to say, stay, you know, X number of feet apart, that people aren't going to be respectful of it. I'm just, just, yeah. just communicating mm -hmm. the information. Okay. They're worried that you're going to say do this and then people it's going to be an emotional highly, highly emotionally charged situation so i i think that may be some of the rationale behind their recommendations i'm just just throwing it out there yeah okay so any are they going to have food there where people are going to be going? no I, I don't think no. the concession stands are open no, I, I would I, hope I not so yeah. yes i don't yeah. want anybody to catch anything no. i think they'll yes. let you bring your own yeah. stuff your own food in your own popcorn and your stuff own in. not like yes. the movies yeah. where they, they, oh, you know, they, they check you out yeah. and um I wanted to toss out one thing. I think we did a great job with Students of Excellence in the paper, and I saw it up on the screen at West Senior. Um, what are we doing about the academies? Because I saw somebody posted, that's how I knew the kids got their gowns. They obviously got their stoles. Oh, yeah. yeah did you? And they get all those certificates. Will they? They're going in the B as well. Okay. Just like Students of Excellence. Oh, good. Did. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. And then they'll still be getting all their certificates mm -hmm. and their. Yep. I felt bad that because they were handing that stuff out like with with, uh, with the cap and gowns. They're yeah. handing that stuff out. Yeah. Matt, what about the thing that like you and Diane would have gone to for the top kids? Oh, the Sard. Oh, yeah. that's, I think it's tonight. It was, that was canceled. <laughs> it was canceled, yeah. but I it believe was it was scheduled for tonight. Ago. Actually, yeah. that's yeah. such a wonderful yeah. event. And yeah. what they do at that with the great big picture of each student yeah. is, mm -hmm. is very cool. It's a great event. And it reminds me kind of what we'll be doing at the drive-ins, I guess. But that's such a great event too. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's. I think everybody feels so bad for, oh, we do. especially yeah. the seniors. Mm -hmm. You know, Be, well, and I, I said the kids didn't even get a chance to have senioritis. Yeah, <laughs> they were but out. life goes on. You know, but yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But I wanted to make sure, especially with the academies, and I hadn't heard anything unless I missed it. 
but I'm glad. Email, but yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it's yeah. going in the beam. Um, and if I could just throw one more thing that we are doing that, and you senior students are aware of this now as well, we've uh, we went out basically and purchased uh, green and blue light bulbs at a very good rate that uh, basically just using some of the money that we would have, you know, used to spend on the graduations to be able to light up the town, you know, so the east side of town, the students, if you're a great east graduate, you got a green light bulb, west is getting a blue light bulb, um, and basically we're going to encourage, there'll be some more information on social media, but we're going to encourage people to put it on your outside fixtures or in your front window. Are they um, getting them with their um, the yeah. gowns? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, nice. so, so, and, we'll, and anybody else, you know, if you have them, you know, if you live, you know, your neighbor, if your neighbor's a senior over at East, you know, turn, turn on your green light, you know, just. Nice. So there'll be some more information coming out soon. Very nice. But there is something okay. sentimental about our own turf and, on, sure. and, yeah. and yes. the caps and gowns. And pomp and cir circumstance, it could be on a loudspeaker. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and that I may be in case. the video, you know, so. I hope there's okay, some so, of our music in the video, but is there? Yeah, I'm sure they're going to do a great Did job everybody of putting see it Mr. all Black together. Did on Facebook on Memorial Day? Awesome. Oh. Out in his front steps playing taps. Oh, wait. Was it taps? I didn't see it. It was excellent. Okay, I so I think we have a motion on the floor to adjourn. Did we make a motion? Yeah. No. Okay. I'll make a motion that we close. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Wait, Opposed? Who seconded it? Okay. And who um, who? Not me. didn't? I'll second. Yeah, I was oh, going to say. Okay. <laughs> you know me. Hello, I lose track of it. Yeah. That's, that's um, okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Go ahead. Okay, carried seven to zero. Everybody have um, a great, safe evening. And again, yeah. if you have any questions about anything on the budget, make sure you um, let us know. Okay? Thank you so much. Thanks, Thank everyone. You.